Warning. The following content may contain elements that are not suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. You know, it's, it's funny too is um, we used to we used to banter back and forth. Uh, I used to always think you were Mexican for the longest time. Oh yeah. And then I was like, y- you told me one day you were like, uh, no, I'm Ecuadorian. It's like, <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> hey, you better get smacked. Now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, like, it, that, what's funny is I didn't see. That's how uh, uncultured I am, right? Because like, I just assume when I look around is like. Oh, that guy's Mexican, right? <laughs> but can you, you know, sure. can you tell me a little bit about like your family background? Like, is it, you know, have you always been in Illinois? Like, so, okay, here, never left the country. Okay. Never had, uh, parents migrated over here. So they never really had the opportunity to send me out there mm-hmm. ever. I tried to go 2020, then. The coronavirus happened. Yeah. So So you've never you've never visited at all. Never at all. So I don't know what's the culture like. I'm probably the least person to even ask about what how Ecuador is like. Mm. I can just tell you that our national dish probably at least on I think the east side of that uh-huh. that country was probably like cuy. Yeah. <laughs> And English is guinea pigs. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. If you two disclaimer <laughs> decides to this like is your fault, man. Yeah. You shouldn't have said it. No. <laughs> You're good. So there's that. Uh, I don't know much about it. Mm. I, hope, I hope to go there one day. One day, My parents grew up there. Yeah, We're both were raised over there. They met each other over there. Got married over there. And they moved over here, obviously for how they say it, the American dream. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's interesting. Then you're you're first generation American. Then, at least what, yeah, well, well yeah, yeah. Uh, a, yeah, a, yeah. Ecuadorian American, yeah. I should say. Yes, is um, so that what has been like? What has it been like growing up? You being the first generation, because the difference between you and I is I'm second generation American, Mexican American. Oh. So like my mom was born in California, right? Okay. So she she's um she's American, Mexican American. And she's first generation where my grandparents were the ones that moved here uh, from mm-hmm. Mexico. So um, for for you, how has it been growing up, you know, uh, with a, being first generation uh, Ecuadorian American? Like, is, what are the challenges you've had to face with that? Well, first thing is they don't speak English very well. Okay. My parents didn't speak English very sure. well. So my mom tried to teach me a little bit of English as much as she can when I was a baby. Uh-huh. So she had little books when I was uh, the ABCs, the one, two, threes, mm. the whole you dig, right? Yeah. That didn't help as much. As obviously, as soon as I go back, went to school, then that's when I started picking up my English. Mm. I still have a little bit of a slur in my words. I think that's how I feel. I'm kind of conscious. I think it's about just it. an accent. So like I, maybe that too. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I really don't know. Mm. But I think that's really it. Not it's uh, the languages, the language barriers. Uh, Obviously, they uh, they came over here with nothing. Yeah. So for them, we always talk about generational wealth, right? Mm. That's a thing that everybody kind of strives for. At least I know I do. And then maybe one day they don't have that. So now me, I guess you saying it, being first generation, I hope I can produce something out of it. Well, I mean, you kind of already started like that was the, you know, the the path that you had carved. But before I get too much into, you know, what you so far have done, like you said that like your parents, you know, you had to translate a lot for them. Cause my, I remember my mom telling me that she, that's what she had to do mm-hmm. was, you know, translate for her parents and cause they didn't speak English either. So, um, how old were your parents when they came to the U S? They, let's see, they got married in 1994. I think they got over here by 1995. Mm-hmm. So they were probably, my dad was probably in his early thirties. My mom in her late twenties. Okay. So, they met pretty late, I guess, if that's yeah. the standard. <laughs> then marriage, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then they had me when he was 35. And when my mom was like, I think, 30, 27 or 31. I don't remember. I forget the age gap. Yeah, yeah, So right now, right now I'm 25. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. And my dad's 60. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a pretty... <laughs> Pretty big, uh, big age gap right there. I'm terrible at math because I, I didn't think that that would add up to 60. <laughs> I 
That's a, I think he was 35, yeah. Oh, wait, if he was 35, you're, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, well, I didn't do math for Marines, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I yeah, miraculously appreciate it. made it. <laughs> yeah, right? So, uh, okay, so then, you know, you spent that time with your, you know, helping out your parents and, and all that. Did, uh, did learning, was learning, like, because uh, you, you had to learn English. Did you struggle to learn English? Because that's something that I struggled to do, because I spoke only Spanish uh, when I grew up. Um, I didn't speak any English whatsoever till I was like five or six years old. So when I was growing up, before I even went to school, it was a lot of Spanish. Mm-hmm. Arroz con pollo. <laughs> yeah. Come todo eso, sino te voy a dar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, but as soon as I started going to school, you know, English, English seemed a little easier to pick up. Came to the point where I didn't want to speak any more Spanish. Mm-hmm. My mom always liked to remind me that I like to tell her, no, no me gusta en español. No, I don't want to speak Spanish. Screw mm. that. That kind of thing. So, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't, I don't think it was difficult. I was a, a toddler. I don't yeah. remember. Oh, what, what they say at our remembering is that what, age five is when we start picking up things. That's, that's, that's like m- some of the earliest memories. Yeah. I was like five. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so that's around the time I, I could remember learning more English mm-hmm. and Spanish. She tried my best. God, God bless. I love her. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. She tried her best. She had books stacked on one side of the wall for me to read. Uh, That's how I did. Uh, did she do Inglés Sin Barreras? <laughs> do you remember that? Those yeah, commercials? Yeah, the big, bo- the big books. The big books, yeah. They had like three volumes and like each yeah. volume was like six each. Oh, Yeah. It, yes, it, I did watch it. it, it it's rough. It's rough. <laughs> well, you said they were like in their 30s. Yeah. It's, it's a lot harder to learn anything like a new, an entire new language in your thirties. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that's why, you know, my grandparents never learned English. Cause it's just, once you get to a certain age, I imagine like the trying to remember what things mean is a lot harder than when you're like, when I was a kid, like for example, when you're a kid, it's just a sponge, you absorb everything. All right. Like that was the case for me is, is people like are surprised when I tell them, like, I didn't speak any English for like when I was a kid, like when I moved to the U S cause I'd lived in Mexico for four years before, uh, I was born in California and then I moved for four years. Oh, wow. And then um, I only spoke Spanish throughout that time. And then I came back to the U.S. when my parents split up. And I didn't speak, like, you know, I started, uh, I was in kindergarten. And, and then I had to go back to Mexico because my, my parents tried to work it out. And then I came back when it didn't work in second grade. So I was in preschool in Mexico. Um, I was kindergarten in, in the U.S., and I went back to Mexico for first grade and came back to the U.S. for second grade. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had to take bilingual classes in second grade or in, the third, in third grade because, like, I didn't speak English well enough. So when people listen to me talk now, they're like, I can't detect an accent on you. I'm like, it's just because, like, I, as a kid, you know, mm-hmm. when, when you're a kid, you don't um, – you can pick it up pretty quick. But when you're older, like you said, your parents, you know, you, you're in your 30s. Like, yeah, you're you're barely gonna be able to say anything right coherent in a full sentence, let right. alone. So, I mean, they tried. No, at yeah. least my mom did. My my dad, you know, always working, try to provide for the family. Mm-hmm. Nope. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like I was going away from the microphone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, that's what it felt like growing up. I had my little sister and my little brother. Uh, help! I had to help them out mm-hmm. a lot when they were. Uh, Younger, because now they both were working a lot. So all that kind of, like, the training wheels that were taken off of me, mm. now, I, now it's my turn to teach them. Was that fair? I mean, I don't know if it's a... Uh, because uh, I remember... We're, we're talking about my life now, right? Yeah. I just want to make sure we can... Yeah, yeah, but that's what it's about. So, what was it? I'm not going to get into detail, but, you know, my mom and dad had marriage problems. Yeah. It came to the point where I was, I was kind of afraid of my, my dad. Yeah. He's always drunk, and then my mom was doing something else. Mm-hmm. So it was really, I was really the head of household at that time, and that was probably between age seven to like maybe eleven. So like mm-hmm. all that time was it was kind of was pretty rough. So uh, you were kind of like a parent, almost like it. Mm-hmm. That, was I ever ready for? It? Probably not. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think any. Yeah. Kid, um, I, I can relate to that. My when we moved to the U.S., my um. Uh, it was only with me and my older brother, my other siblings. Uh, they stayed with my dad, so it was me and my brother, who's only a year or nine months older than me, like not even full two years. So when we moved here, I was like five years old, and in that time, like he had to microwave things. You know, we had to figure. My mom was working two jobs, so it was just 
for a while it was just her, you know? And so my brother had to uh, figure out how to put, he almost burned down the house once cause, uh, <laughs> cause he had to put chicken oh, in the, man. in the microwave and he didn't know how long you, you're supposed to put it on there. Right. So he put it for five minutes for a full five minutes and it was on a styrofoam plate. So it, it burned straight through it and like the black smoke started coming out of it. I remember we were terrified, like waiting cause my mom was, uh, going to be home like in a few hours. Uh-huh. So now we're like, we almost burned the house down and now there's black smoke everywhere. We have to open all the windows and, you know, get the smell out of it. We used Febreze, you know, like to try to, <laughs> <Get you. laughs> yeah, it was, it, but that's what I mean. It's like, yeah. we were, you know, we were like trying to take care of, our, he was trying to take care of me and, you know, like be a parent basically. Uh-huh. So like I was the little sibling in that situation, whereas you were kind of yeah. doing like what my brother did. And I could tell you that, like, that stuff puts a lot of strain on on you, a, a lot of stress on you as a growing kid, because, like, you got your own stuff you got to worry yeah, about. Deal with and, school. Yeah, like, you know, you, you have to focus on learning whatever they're you teaching know, you. We're still developing. You know, we're definitely growing, trying to capture everything we can. Yeah. The funny story you just said, almost exactly the same thing happened to me. What's that? Uh, the rotisserie chicken, we need to heat it up. I'm like, <laughs> man, I don't know. Like, and it was in this uh, this. Uh, aluminum foil kind of bag yeah so i didn't know any better i just stuffed it in a microwave put it like oh. for like a minute and 30 seconds and all i remember seeing is the fireworks in the microwave boom boom yeah boom. yeah yeah. <laughs> it was this my whole science was, experiment yeah. <laughs> my sister was like what's going on yeah, yeah. and i'm like oh don't worry go away it was, it was, it was funny like, yeah. i was embarrassed but it was funny that <laughs> something like that happened i mean those were the good memories but yeah, I mean, those yeah. are both like, uh, I, I would call those like bittersweet, you know, because like, yeah, they're funny. And when you look back at them, but as a kid, like, bro, like I didn't, I thought the ho- the house was going to get burnt down, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, you know, th- we didn't have an adult to like supervise any of that. So like, that's just how it was, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's this, and it doesn't mean like, you know, I mean, my mom tried her best, right? right? She was obviously trying to provide for us working two jobs. So she would try to leave food for us to be able to like prepare, but like, you know, we're kids t- at the same time. Right? right. So, 